So I'm back into my home directory. Uh, let's go into my ITS352 directory. What's in there? My xyz.doc. Make sure you have a file with a few lines in it. Doesn't matter what's in it. Uh, I'll just check mine. XYZ. Alright, my file has some text in there. One thing that we need to know is how to process text files. So we've seen some commands for do dealing with text files, displaying, showing the head, the tail, word count. Uh, it's very powerful if on a command line if we can automatically process text files to help configuring our computer. So the next thing we're going to do is first search through a text file. And one way to search through a text file is called a program called grep. And a simpler way to use it, grep, then you specify a pattern. What do you want to search for? Maybe I want to search for the word example in my file. And grep will return all of the lines in that file that match that pattern. In my file, yours may be different, so maybe your word you search for can be different. Depends on what's in your file. Mine returns three lines inside the file which contain the word example. So very simple. Search through the file, return all the lines which contain that pattern. We can use wildcards there if we want. What did I do there? That's a bad example. Don't use a wildcard there. Let's avoid that one. The grep, so what I did there was a mistake for what we want to do. Grep has a number of options where we can specify regular expressions and use wildcards and other special characters to match different patterns. But we will not deal with those right now. Uh, it takes some time to look at the, the syntax. So let's simply stick with searching through for particular words in a file for now. So grep can search through files. We can do an inverted search, find all the lines that don't match that word. Again, all the lines, the minus V for inverted is all the lines that don't have that word. And it shouldn't show the ones with example. So a very quick use of grep to search for a file. We'll see some other examples later. Next thing. Up until now, all of the programs we've been running, we've interacted with, with those programs by running it and then they usually show something on the screen. So grep, for example, printed out the answer on the screen. The screen is how we get the output of this program but in fact we don't have to print it on the screen, we can put it inside a file. So we're going to look at how we can put the output of a program in a file rather than printing it on the screen. And it's quite easy in fact. Do that again. Grep. I want to search for all the lines in my file which don't contain the word lines. If I do that, those lines are printed on the screen. What I can do is redirect the output of that program using the greater than sign into a file. I can name it what I like, my output.txt, run it, see what happens. It doesn't print anything on the screen. The grep program run, runs but the output of that program is redirected from the screen, which is called the standard output, the standard location to put the output, and is instead sent to, into a file. Now let's look inside our file, my out. We can use less. 
look inside your file, see what you get. You see the output of grep. So this concept is called redirection. We redirect the output of a command to some other location. And the very common way we do it is redirect the output of the command from the screen to a file. ls, we know has ls minus l as an option, sorry, the long output. We can ls a particular directory, ls minus l slash shows from the root directory. We can also recursively ls. A recursive ls means show me the contents of that directory and its subdirectories and their subdirectories and their subdirectories. It keeps going. That's what the minus uppercase R does with ls. Let's list all the files on our hard disk. It may take some time to list them, you see. It's going through the hard disk, listing all of the files. To stop that, because I'm in too impatient, you can try Control C. Control C kills or cancels the, the program from running. That was ls minus l minus r, uh, uppercase r slash. Maybe I want to know all the files on the hard disk, instead of showing them on the screen, put them inside a file. Now, what's happening? Here are some errors being displayed. The files themselves are not being displayed, but the error messages are. What's happened when a program runs, that program produces two types of output. The program produces output, the, the standard output from the program, the normal output it, 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 it produces when there's no problems. But if there are error messages, they are also printed on the screen. But the error messages are considered separate from the standard output. What you see on the screen now are the set of error messages from the command I run. With redirection and the greater than sign, it only just shows the normal output and puts it into the file. The error messages are still printed on the screen. The concept, and it's on one of the slides on the, the website, The concept is with any command, when we run a command, there are in fact three ways, three uh, interfaces to that command. There's the input to the command. Some commands take you or accept input from you. We haven't seen any yet. We may see some later. But some commands we can supply input. It's called the standard input. Then the command runs and the command does something and it produces two types of output. The normal output, the standard output, which is the expected output. LS shows a list of files. GREP shows a list of uh, lines that match some criteria. But if there's errors, it may also print error messages. There goes my mouse. And that's referred as the standard error. So. There are three interactions to a command, the standard input, the standard output, and the standard error. Normally, the standard input comes from what we type. Both the standard output and standard error are printed on the screen after when the command runs. That's what normally happens. With redirection, using the greater than sign, the standard input is normal, that doesn't change. The error messages are still displayed on the terminal, but with redirection with a greater than sign, the standard output is saved in a file. OK? 
Okay, so instead of printing it on the terminal, it prints it into a file. So we can look at it later. It's very useful to get a record of what's happened. You don't want to look at it as it goes, you want to look at it later. Redirect into a file. There are different options. You can redirect both the standard output and the standard error into a file. Note the difference. Here's the ampersand character and the greater than. With just greater, greater than, the standard output is saved to a file, but not the errors. With this one, both the output and the errors are saved into a file. And there are other variations. One of them, the common one we'll use is this, just greater than sign. Run a command, don't print the output on the screen, print it into a file. Another one, which I don't have on the slides, if you use two greater than signs, it appends to the file. One greater than sign overwrites the contents of the file, two adds to the end of the, of the file if it exists. So let's try those two commands again. The others with the ampersand we'll not try, I think we'll not use. Let's try a couple more redirections to file. Just check that command I run. Allfiles.txt, it's only uh, 30 megabytes uh, in size. That, if we have a quick look at it, not all of it of course, it's the list of all files and directories on my hard disk, except for those which I didn't have permission to look at. I'm going to delete that. If you create one, delete it so you don't take up space. We'll do a few more simple redirections. And to do them, let's introduce some other commands. Who are you logged in as? If you forget who you are, then ask the computer. Computer, who am I? Okay, who, who am I tells you the current user you're logged in as. In my other terminal, I'm logged in as the instructor. Okay, there are different users on here. We can redirect the output of who am I into a file. All right, so instead of printing on the screen, it just goes inside that file. Another command, echo. Echo echoes that string onto the, the terminal. Very simple. Whatever we type after the echo is printed. Does nothing other than print on the screen. It's like a printf statement in a, in a programming language or a print statement. So we can echo into a file. And if we want to append to a file instead of, instead of overwrite it, use two greater than signs. Name already contains student. And now I'm going to append to the end of that, hello. Two greater than signs echoes. One of them overwrites, just to confirm that. If you just use a single greater than sign, you'll delete what was in the file before. So the greater than sign, the two greater thans, and there are some other variations are called redirection. Redirect, especially the output to a file. Next, and another new concept, is that when we run commands, often we'd like to do more complex things than, than what we've done so far, and we can do that by running multi multiple commands, not just one after the other, but run a command, take the output of that command, and use it as input to the next command. And this is called a pipe. Combine multiple commands together using a pipe. Let's see some examples. 
What's my IP address? I told you at the start, 10.10.16.201. What's yours? Do you know the command to find it? Who am I tells you who you're logged in as, your IP address, is, which is not the topic for today. I think we may have seen it last semester. You may have seen me use ifconfig. You don't need to remember that yet, but it's useful for the example. ifconfig shows you details about your interfaces. And if you scroll up, you'll see your IP address somewhere. Which interface does has an IP address for you? I don't have scroll on my terminal, so I'll just scroll up here. I have config, I note ETH0, 10.10.16.201, and I note that's the internet address, INET address. I don't want all this other information. I just want my IP address. So what we can do is maybe try grep. Run ifconfig and take the output of ifconfig and then use that as an input to grep searching for inet address. Try that. Where the way to combine the two commands is this vertical bar which is shift back uh, back not backspace what's that backslash backslash is the key shift backslash this is called the pipe character it means take the output of the first command and use it as input to the next and it returns all lines which were output from ifconfig which match inet addr and we see two there. Can we improve upon that? What if I just want the IP address? Now let's run ifconfig again. But we can run ifconfig with a sub option with the specific interface I want. This is a little bit outside of the scope today. We'll cover it later. But with ifconfig it shows I have ETH0, 1, 2 and LO. I'm looking just for ETH0. So I have config ETH0 and now grep into INET ADDR, the internet address, and I get a single line which includes my IP address plus my broadcast address and a network mask. I just want the IP address. So let's try and do some operations on that single line. There's different ways to do it. We can take that output and pipe it into another command. This other command we can use, one is called cut. Cut takes a string of text and splits it into chunks where we can specify the delimiter let's say is the colon character, that is the chunks are separated by that character and the chunks are actually called fields. This is going to take this line of text and cut it up into fields separated by the colon character, so this would be field 1, field 2, field 3, I want field 2. That's what the minus F does. What do we get? Can we do another cut and just get the IP address? Let's pipe that into another cut. The delimiter, what? Is a space, maybe. Field 1. Now I've extracted my IP address from ifconfig and, ex and removed all other information. There may be better ways to do that, but, and it's... Uh, may only work in certain cases but it's an illustration that we can combine multiple commands together using the pipe operator, that vertical bar. 
And in doing that, I've introduced this new command of text processing called cut. And the, a simple way used to use cut, we specify the thing that separates the fields, the delimiter, and it can only be a single character, and then we specify the fields that we want. And cut is given on the, the, the Linux reference sheet as well. Many commands can be combined using the pipe operator. As long as one produces output and the other takes some input. What's the port number used for a web server? Everyone remember a common quiz question? Not this week, later weeks. The port number for a web server? Not 50, starts with an 8, 80. Different applications have different port numbers. Some we won't remember. On the Linux operating system, there's a file that lists the set of port numbers. It's in the etc directory, and it, the file is called services. Again, this is outside of the scope for today, but we'll use it as the example. we can see the port numbers of different services. Secure shell servers use port 22. HTTP, if you scroll down, uses port 80. And others. Q to quit. Maybe we can search through. rather than having to browse through, let's look for all the lines that contain HTTP. And we get, well, we get a few extra lines that we don't really want here. Uh, If we want to filter out, we can actually specify the specific word of HTTP. It gets rid of some. And then we could, actually we don't even need the word, we could pipe that into a, a cut and get rid of the comments, for example. separate the fields by the hash character, grabbing only the first field. Maybe you want to sort them. So all I'm doing is building up one larger command by combining them, the smaller ones, with pipe operations. Sort the output. HTTP dash alt becomes before HTTPS. Maybe we just want to cut and get rid of everything before the, after the slash. So just another example of building up and getting information from a text file especially using pipe, grep, cut, sort and some of the other text operation uh, commands can be used in the same manner. <coughs>